Going back to the beginning, you started riding motocross a little bit. Tell us about your motocross career. Me and my cousin Chris and his brother Tommy, we were racers. Um, to, uh, as we were junior many, senior many racers. And we were winning races back then, and one day my dad came to me and said, you want to keep doing this? And at 13, you don't know what you want to do. And I, and I said, I really didn't care about doing it anymore, which is strange to me now looking back at it. And at 19, um, discovered street bikes, thank God. And uh, spent two years on a street bike, riding back and forth to work to the plastic bag factory where I worked. Dad, I quit high school. My dad said, you better get a job, son. And so I did. And, and I rode that thing, rain, sleet, or snow, every day. And, uh, and I'm glad I did, because it led me here to this chair. And Russell was taking that bike to the front. He is the leader. In 1985, I sat right out there in the stands and watched a guy named Freddie Spencer just decimate the field in, in every class, the 250, the 500. And then that was, I think, the first year they went to Superbikes just for the 200, I want to think. And he just killed them. And that was the guy, that was when the light bulb came on, and I said, I want to do that. It inspired me to, to uh, go take a, to take a Ed Bargy riding school at Little Talladega. And uh, ended up entering three classes, one, two, and finished second in the other one to my buddy Paul Bray. And uh, I said, I'll be back next weekend. Um, 1992, um, we, had, we had a great bike, we had a great team, and, and, uh, and the, the Doug Poland was, was the guy that I had to battle that, that year. But that day, I had, I had to take it from him. So I was following him around um, about seven or eight laps from the end. I was, I was looking at my watch thinking, let's get this over with. I got this in the bag, you know. I was just sitting on him, and uh, Doug's a smart guy, you know. And, and we rolled around, and we went. <laughs> We went in the chicane the last lap, and he went through there so fast. I'd never seen him go through there fast. And he came out, and he had a he had a lead that there was no way I was going to catch him. And there was a guy on another Kawasaki at the time that just happened to be right in the perfect spot. His name was Kevin Blaze. And as I came around the bank, he, he, he moved up right in front of me, and I pulled the draft. And as soon as I got to his rear wheel, he moved out of the way. So I never had to break stride or alter my line. And, and then I got that run, and he pulled me right up to that Ducati, and I come off a NASCAR 4, and I think I blew the stickers off that thing when I came by him. I was so close and so fast. That was a sweet one. You know, that may have been the sweetest one. I go out to win every race, period. That's the reason I raced, you know, to, to, to the glory of winning, the feeling of, of Victory is just, you can't describe it, you know. Russell is going to cut across the front of Sadowski. He moves into the number two position. Look at Russell cut across the front. These guys are riding right on the edge. Here comes the winner. He has been out front all day long by a mile. The Georgia native, the world champion super biker, Scott Russell, takes the win. When I win a race, I'm screaming in my helmet the whole way around. and It's just it's great, you know, for me. So to me, that's why I raced. I, like I said, when it goes back to the first race at Little Talladega, I entered three classes. I won two, finished second. The other one, I think that, that did it for me then. I said, this is what I do now. I, I, I win races and I beat people. From last to first, two years in a row, Scott Russell wins Daytona. Well, it tells the story behind the Screaming Chief helmet. Uh, yeah, I remember in 1990, I went to Troy Lee, and I uh, took a helmet to him, and I, and I had an idea, I said I want feathers on it, but I didn't, you know, get into what, I just thought we were on the same page. I was thinking like a Philadelphia Eagles helmet with the, the bird feathers on the side, and I cracked that thing up, and when it showed up here at Daytona right before the race, and, and I guess I'm an Indian chief now. So, it was, uh, it was nice to see that. And we're still seeing it out there with the rye, and it, and it, uh, and from that, the, the Screaming Chief logo was derived. The, had a lot of success with the helmet. It's cool to see them out. These young riders out there wearing them nowadays, and uh, when you see that, you know who it is. You know what it means. So that's special for me. I never dreamed I'd be in the Hall of Fame. You know, I, I picked.
pictured. Uh, I never pictured it. I got to be honest. I never did. And like I said, when I started racing, it was all for fun. So I didn't picture any of this.